Greetings travelers, welcome to Lorespire. Today we're going to cover all of the information I could find for the factions of the Wayward Realms and the notable figures within those factions. As always, it is early in the development process, so information could be subject to change. The archipelago is full of people of all walks of life. Sometimes, people with similar ideas to one another decide to form factions to enact a change in the world. Not all factions are planned to be joinable in the Wayward Realms, and those that are joinable may not be joinable in every playthrough. The choices you make during character creation and throughout your adventures will allow you to join certain factions and exclude you from others. There are at least 52 factions I was able to confirm the existence of when researching this video, though for many of them I could not even find a name, but we still know that they do exist. These factions include the 13 Noble Houses of Splendor, the 9 Orc Clans of Shi, 17 factions that are more independent in nature, the Temple Factions for each of the Goddesses, Cult Factions, and Guild Factions. I believe the vast majority of these factions will be joinable, but at least a few are likely not to be. The Noble Houses As I said, there are 13 Noble Houses of Splendor, each with varying values, recreational activities, and goals. All are under the rule of King Basilius IV and his Light Elf wife, Queen Melisande. House Rao House Rao focuses on the study and pursuit of arcane knowledge. In their eyes, it is not only a passion, but their divine birthright to understand and master the power of magic. You can see the way that magic influences House Rao as much on the outside of it as you can on the inside. From arcane architecture adorning their towns, to a common saying amongst the denizens, there stirs as much under Bordlandshire's soil as above, referring to just how many choose to embrace the gift of magic in these lands. So yeah, this sounds like Inquisitor-free territory to me, and definitely seems like a faction with which most mages would want to be affiliated. House Abara House Abara places high value on physicality and strategy, and has a penchant for games both physical and mental. They host tourneys and sporting events, and they run official gambling houses in Splendor's capital city of Coventry. Members of House Abara are known to hunt wyverns for sport. They are also known to use dangerous locales as proving grounds for members of their house. Knowing that, we can probably expect dungeon diving to be a prerequisite to joining House Abara. Lord Batorinus is the head of House Abara, and their lands are known to include parts of Morothweir and the prison island known as the Isle of Thorns. Batornus appointed his brother Tamanius to rule as Earl over House Abara's Morothweir holdings, and he does so with an iron fist. Tamanius even goes so far as to create his own laws for Morothweir while ignoring the laws set by the king. He believes his harsh authoritarian tendencies are the only way to civilize the wastelands of Morothweir. Concerning the Isle of Thorns, although it is in House Abara's territory, we don't actually know how much, if any, direct control they have over the prison itself. Among House Abara's nobles is Baron Wolvar Reka, whose forefathers were exiled from Shi long ago. Despite having earned a title and land holdings, some humans still question whether Wolvar's loyalties lie with Splendor or his former clansmen in Shi. House Seastorm Morgosia Seastorm is the dwarf baroness of Argos Shire, whose territory includes a part of Morothweir. She is known to be one of the few supporters of Earl Tamanius. Many other barons suspect that this is because they are secretly running smuggling operations together with her fleet of trade ships. Only House Seastorm is officially sanctioned by the Crown to farm, process, and distribute Morothi Stingroot outside of Morothweir. House Phaleron 
House Faleron is known to seek knowledge of all things through academic studies and scientific research. That is pretty much the only info I could find on this house, uh, but for me personally, that is enough to make me want to join. I seriously doubt we could become a researcher or a scientist for Faleron, but it would be cool if in doing quests for them, we discovered answers to questions of the workings of the natural world. For example, while working for them, we might learn how or why it is that magic is infused throughout the natural world. I would find something like this extremely interesting, especially for my necromancer playthrough that I'm planning. House Zalakan. House Zalakan, who rule over the western half of Morothwyr and the surrounding islands, serve as judges for the Kingdom of Splendor. From the most important trials to the largest sporting events of House Abara, one can be sure to find a Zalakan judge presiding. Hosan, the heir to the house Zalakan, has the most encyclopedic knowledge of the law in the kingdom, yet his strict traditionalist outlook on the law is a stark contrast to his personal life, where he surrounds himself with female prostitutes and companions despite being married to a man. House Lithurn House Lithurn is charged with the protection of splendor from any orc incursions in the north. They are known to be rather strict about who crosses the border in either direction. The border lords of House Lithurn are tough and seasoned warriors who often claim the armor and weapons of their fallen foes, either as trophies or to be reworked into human armaments. House Ja. House Ja is a powerful house controlling territory within Splendor. They are known for their odd eccentricities. From their clothing to their foods to their games, they prove time and again to be the most peculiar of folk. This house has many interesting figures such as Duchess Morgana, a powerful figure who is rumored to have pacts with beings not of this world. Morgana has three children, Annabelle, of whom we know nothing as far as I can tell, and the twins Alistair and Galleon Devon. Alistair strives to see the family return to a time when the clan was defined for its military might instead of its eccentricities, and Galleon Devon has married into House Adebayo. Barsamilo is a favorite son of House Ja and is cousin to Alistair and Galleon Devon. Barsimilo is known as a pastry chef who weaves magic into his artisanal goods. Then there is Baron Ferkaisen, an orc nobleman within House Ja's territory. He is a stalwart example of his people as he prefers armor over court finery, much to his wife's dismay, and finds House Ja's early militaristic history more appealing than its current policies. House Adebayo this noble house can be found in the northern marshlands of Splendor. Though lacking in military might and valuable resources, Duke Arthuri Adebayo, like his people, have learned to be self-reliant. House Adebayo takes great pride in their famous ateliers, and many young artists travel there regularly, hoping to study under the great master painters, sculptors, and craftsmen. Unlike most dukes in Splendor, Arthuri Adebayo cares little for the politics of the realm. Though his wife, who comes from House Ja, secretly plots away in the hopes of placing their son, Nigel, on the throne, despite others looking down on the boy for his physical impairment. Do be careful if you wish to travel to Adebayo lands. The sunken roads and rough environment allow for strange creatures, gangs of highwaymen, and more to lurk unseen. House Derekoth The lands of Derekoth can be found in a more southern portion of Splendor and share a border with House Abara. Octavian, the head of House Derekoth, inherited the title after his father fell from a castle balcony. Some claim that Octavian had a hand in it, eager to snatch the house's newfound wealth for himself. Though he denies such rumors, he doesn't shy away from flaunting his riches. House Khan House Khan is headed by the Duchess Aeson, who became Duchess at the age of 13 after her parents were assassinated. Her older brother Ismail, who had been disowned years earlier on account of being a Cambian, returned home to Legera and pledged his service to Aeson as her bodyguard. Though many fear that Ismail 
might have had a hand in the assassination as means of returning home and reclaiming his birthright, his unwavering loyalty to his beloved sister gives pause even to the most vocal detractors. Now that is all of the noble houses of splendor. I know that was only 10, not 13, but I couldn't find even a mention of the other three. Up next we have the orc clans of Shi. And in this case, I could actually only find mention of two of the nine orc clans and only anything of significance on one of them. Hopefully in the coming months, the orc clans will begin to become as known to us as the noble houses, possibly in Orktober, if not before. Clan Rekka. Clan Rekka is a clan of orcs who over 50 years ago attempted to usurp the orcish throne of Shi, but were defeated. After a traditional orcish trial, the likes of which is shown here, the chieftain and Haga was grievously punished and the entire clan was exiled to the fringes of Shi. Clan Anguz Queen Bektra, the sovereign of Adredra and the nine clans of Shi, is from Clan Anguz. That's all I got for them. Uh, now we are on to the individual factions that are not necessarily beholden to any particular kingdom or lands. The Order of Saint Latra it's no secret that goblins make excellent thieves. In fact, deep in the heart of Splendor's capital, the goblin-led Order of St. Latra tries to organize thieves, burglars, pickpockets, and other unsavory underworld individuals, ensuring that none of them becomes too greedy or too powerful. It seems likely or at least possible that this could be some kind of a Robin Hood-like faction. Whether it is or not, my low IQ Goblin Thief playthrough will almost certainly be joining St. Latra. The Baron's Men For many years, Belfer Parva's Port Authority has failed to put a stop to the Baron's Men, a gang of thieves with no true affiliation to the Baron himself. They are known fences for incoming pirate ships and either steal or run protection rackets on the local shop owners and fishmongers. So why can't the Port Authority bring them to justice? Well, many of the victims believe that the Port Authority members are either in the pockets of the Baron's men or calling the shots for them themselves. The Bowman Bastards A fierce fighters guild and mercenary group known as the Bowman Bastards roams the island of Ijar, serving the people while accepting gold to settle their drinking debts. Held as heroes, they uphold a loose but honorable code of conduct, ensuring peace prevails on the island of Ijar. However, their current focus is the relentless pursuit of a unique and deadly murderer. Usually such matters would be left to the local authorities, but this killer, assumed it dead for 13 years, impacted the lives of the bastard's leaders. It is now their honorable duty to swiftly solve this mystery and bring an end to the killer's life. Cyrus and Burke Expeditionary Company Among the many factions that you as a player can support or destroy is the C and B Expeditions. They explore the untamed lands and waters of the archipelago, they salvage rare artifacts from ruin explorations, and perform wilderness mapping and excavations for profit. From humble beginnings, the organization has grown immensely in size and reputation, though there are some who do not appreciate their work, of course. The Inquisitors The Inquisitors aim to protect humans from demi-humans, monsters, and magic. Their methods, however, are often viewed as being worse than the threat itself. The Inquisitors are known to engage in book burning, the spread of propaganda, and they desire to erase the existence of magic from the world, leaving people to believe it was simply folklore. The Inquisitors use magic-seeking calibans like hunting dogs to track down and eliminate mages. They bring swift and brutal justice down upon those they deem to be a threat to humanity. While many view them as vile warmongers, in a world full of danger, they can be a powerful ally. While all Caliban are considered incredibly dangerous, the Grand Inquisitor's pet albino Caliban is truly a fearsome sight. Named after his mother-in-law, Sogra is the largest Caliban on record 
and has grown to such tremendous mass due to being overfed on captured mages. The Inquisitors use the Glaiviette as their signature sidearm, which resembles their sacred symbol. The symbol is often left carved, etched, or painted in places they have cleansed. The Lore Masters The Lore Masters run the Library of Logos, which is an enormous library inside of a mountain. It is a repository of ancient knowledge, artifacts, and relics. Much of its contents are magical or supernatural in nature. The Lore Masters contain many different sub-factions that disagree with each other on certain points. As a result, infighting is commonplace. And as you can see here, some of the Lore Masters do not appear to be any of the playable races, meaning there is likely at least one more intelligent quasi-humanoid race in the archipelago. One of the sub-factions of the Lore Masters is led by Hypatia, pictured here. And we also know of one more Lore Master leader, Sotor, pictured here. As a whole, the Lore Master's main goal is protecting the Library of Logos and collecting magical tomes and forbidden knowledge for the library. Knowing all of this, it should come as no surprise that the Inquisitors have long sought the Library of Logos and its Lore Masters. Are you the type to help the Inquisitors destroy this priceless repository of arcane artifacts and knowledge? Or will you help the mysterious Lore Masters in collecting more of that knowledge and defending the library against outsiders? Or perhaps this is all you care to do. The Ipso Whilst the inhabitants of Ijar often encounter mysterious red-cloaked strangers wandering about, the world at large is familiar with a similarly crimson-cloaked group known as the Ipso, rumored to have splintered off from the often mythologized lore masters. The Ipso share a similar goal of seeking out lost or forbidden knowledge and unveiling the mysteries of the world. Yet their aim is not to hoard this knowledge away like some greedy hermit, but rather to share it openly and freely with the people of the world. This philosophy has earned them plenty of enemies, and you are unlikely to find an Ipso who is not well armed, armored, and trained in the deadly arts. After all, knowledge is power. The Knights Errant Not affiliated with any major orcish clan, the Knights Errant are a faction of well armed and well trained warriors who travel the land proving themselves in tournaments and other knightly endeavors. They have done much to improve the standing of orcs in human society. The goals of the Knights Errant are decidedly positive and in service of a better world. The Order of Al Dajjal Embracing their demonic appearance, with some even believing themselves to be true demons, the group of Cambians known as the Order of Al Dajjal are a darker presence on the archipelago. Their aim is to bring cataclysm and ruin to the world, though for what purpose remains unknown. This is probably the closest thing to an evil faction the Wayward Realms currently has. The Keepers of the Beast Ogres sometimes fall victim to a disease that turns their flesh to stone and destroys their mind, turning them violently feral. To keep these rampaging ogres from giving ogrekin a bad reputation, the Keepers of the Beast are an ogreish order dedicated to hunting down and ending their misery. Some say they kill, some say they cure, and some would ask, in this case, is there even a difference? The Jungarian Horsemen Tribes The Horsemen Tribes are a nomadic people who have only arrived in splendor in recent history. They are well known for their swordsmanship, towering steeds, and military prowess. Jungaria is the homeland of the horsemen. They are a tribal people. The Great Hejar was the first of their people to unite all of the tribes and conquer Lavinium. Since then, the tribes have been pretty scattered across the continent, but they are still referred to as the Jungarian horsemen. As practitioners of mysticism, the Jungarian horsemen consume the drug Kiaborta to enter a dreamlike state in hopes of communing with the dead and the divine. 
They believe that dreams are the realm of the goddess Umbria and her husband, the Malus Takiros, who shepherds the dead to her dream world. It is through them that the horsemen hope to find their promised land. In Splendor, some of the tribal horsemen have pledged themselves to the noble houses of Rao and Khan. Their military might has come in handy in recent wars, and a few individuals have even become key members within the noble courts. Shigoro is a personal bodyguard of the Lady of House Khan and an intimidating warrior. His intimidation factor is aided by the fact that he carries a wereboar tusk hilted sword, the tusk being a trophy claimed from an encounter with such a beast. Okay, now for the next section, we're going to look at factions from the Wayward Realms Kickstarter goals. If the goals associated with these factions are reached, then we can expect to see them in early access, and if not, then we will have to wait for the final release to meet them. If you haven't pledged to the Kickstarter yet, there is a link in the description of this video that you can use to check it out. Consider supporting if you are able to. Every little bit of support helps bring everything that this video is about to life. The Port Authority the Port Authority is based out of Belfort Park. They run patrol routes around the Isle of Ijar, protecting ships from pirate attacks. It is believed by many that the Port Authority is in cahoots with the criminal faction known as the Baron's Men. The Baron's Army, not to be confused with the Baron's Men, which is a thief's group, this is the actual army of the Baron. Uh, I can't say for sure which Baron, but it seems pretty likely that it's the Baron Anatork. As far as I know, he's the only Baron on Ijar, so probably his army. Nadeau's Financial Acquisitions I have no information for this or any of the following factions confirmed through the Kickstarter. However, from the name alone, I find Nadeau's Financial Acquisitions interesting and will almost definitely be working for them in some type of a thief or scoundrel playthrough in early access. The last three factions that were informed by the Kickstarter are Godsend's Army, the Red Countess's Pirates, and the Corvus Monastery. I don't have any info for these other than the obvious that can be inferred by their names. The first is an army faction, the second a pirate faction, and the third is likely a faction of monks. Now let's quickly hit on the temple factions. Each of the living goddesses will have at least one temple faction associated with them, so that is six temple factions in total. I couldn't find any information on the temple factions besides what was implied from the lore video we have on the goddesses. I will link to the goddesses video here and in the description so you can check that out to get a better idea of what each temple faction might be about. There are planned to be many cults in the game. There is no telling how many there will be, or how many might be joinable. I was able to find mention of a few cult types that seem to be likely to be found in the Wayward Realms. Those are Dragon Cults, Therianthropy Cults, Malice Cults, Blood Cults, Cults devoted to the Dead Goddess Fortuna, and a cult mentioned as a Kickstarter stretch goal called the Eyes of the Raven. Last. We have guilds. There are sure to be many guilds in the archipelago. This is speculation, but I think it makes sense for there to be at least one for each type of craftsman in the Wayward Realms, such as blacksmiths, jewelry makers, alchemists, and so on. Guilds for thieves, merchants, mercenaries, banks, and pretty much any other popular institutions or professions could be possible as well. The only two specific guilds I have found mention of are a Dwarfen Guild in Rathum that issues Traveler's Permits and a Dwarfen Shipwrights Guild that obviously builds ships. I imagine most guilds will have quests available to the player but will not be possible to join. In the case of guilds that do align with something that the player can actually do, such as mercenary work or alchemy, it might be possible to join but you would likely have to remain as a low-level functionary and would be unlikely to be able to raise much through the ranks, if at all. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about the Wayward Realms, 
check out these videos here. I can't wait to experience early access with all of you next year. It's going to be so amazing. Anyways, this has been Chris with Lorespire. Be well, my friends.